in league action. It's been a, it feels like it's been a while. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, obviously, um, last time out, I think it was Portsmouth one it, and it wasn't a particularly good result for us. Um, probably a little bit understandable, sort of looking back at the, the amount of changes that we had to make, the team that we had to put out against a very, very strong side. Um, so, yeah, as you can probably imagine, we, we're looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, we've had a couple of good uh, cup victories um, and feel a little bit refreshed, ready for the game. You've had some players away in the international duty. I assume they've been back for a short while. Are they all OK? Well, they're only actually back in this morning, so I can't really give you the answer to that uh, at this moment in time. No, um, because obviously when they return, they have to be tested, etc. Um, so this morning... Um, will probably be the first, well, I'm hoping it is, obviously, because we'll get the results this morning that they, they, they have an opportunity to, uh, to, cook, to come and train. And, and to be fair, like, it's, it's one of them where it's going to be probably needed. We need as many bodies as we possibly can because when I looked at the fixture list or potential fixture list uh, yesterday and seeing that we've got, what is it, about 10 games in 31 days or whatever it may be, potentially, it's a little bit scary looking at it. And it must be a bit of a, a difficulty for you because you don't know whether these players are available both through injury and, as you mentioned, with their COVID tests to come through as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously we're aware that, that uh, Scully and, and, and Zach had minutes. Um, I did get a report back that Zach might have an issue with his hamstring. Uh, that's one of the reasons he come off. So, you know, that will be disappointing and, and um, frustrating. Uh, I think Scully, I'm being told, is OK. And then, obviously, Brennan wasn't in the squad the other night, so he should be OK. But, like you say, if his, pop, his, his, if his test comes back as a, as a positive one, then, obviously, we're going to lose him for a period of time. Is it a strange experience loading these players out? You're obviously really happy for them in their careers. It's sort of like giving your mum your car. A little bit, yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's um, it, 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 listen. It's frustrating, but it's part of part and parcel of the job. And um, the, you know, them, those three players, obviously, you know, um, it's great that they get the opportunity to represent the country. But um, you know, we've some, we've done some really, really good stuff over the last couple of weeks with the players. We've had an opportunity to have three or four really sort of detailed training sessions in terms of how we set up, what we do, little reminders from the stuff we did pre-season. And obviously, those guys have unfortunately missed that. Um, just a couple of fun ones about, uh, about Brendan in particular. Uh, it made his debut for Wales, which is, uh, which is great for him and his family. Yeah, fantastic. And obviously, you know, it is brilliant for him and his family. Obviously, I know his family very well. His mum, Alison, as well. Um, so I'm sure, sure they'd be very, very proud of the fact that he made his senior debut. And, Listen, I'm absolutely convinced it's, uh, it's the first of uh, what's going to be many over the coming years. As you know, success can be a double-edged sword. And I think a few uh, fans look at what happened last year with Tyler Walker, obviously a, another Forest player, and what then happened in, in January. I know it's still sort of six weeks away, January, but is that a concern for you that the success you can have with a player can maybe curtail your time with them? Yes, yeah, it does. There's no doubt about it. I mean, um, you know, it, yeah, it's like you say, it's double-edged, really, because um, the reality is if he does get called back or someone takes him, it's because he's either done well and, and, he, and, and he's enjoyed his time at the football club because he's able to flourish and, and play well and perform well. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be aware that, you know, if that does happen or can happen, that we have someone who's potentially... Um, going to be able to come in and replace the likes of, um, of Brennan. It's going to be very, very difficult because um, for a club our size, and I mean that with a great respect to, to have someone like Brennan here, you know, the quality he's got, uh, it takes it up to another level at times. Um, I think the disappointment from, from last season uh, was obviously the timing probably more than anything that, you know, obviously it's a couple of days before the wind is short and, you know, it gives you less time. So, I think the um, the opportunity for potentially Brennan to, to go back, God forbid, uh, I think is a lot earlier in the window. So then that gives us the opportunity to make sure that, you know, if that is the case, you know, we can find a replacement. But um, 
you know, I, I think at this moment in time, and I don't want to be sort of making these decisions because obviously Chris has gone in and he's the new manager. I'm sure games under Brennan's belt is the, is the most important thing for him at this moment in time. And if that is the case, and they're thinking on the similar sort of lines as himself, then obviously we're going to be the ones, hopefully, that give him the opportunity to do that. We saw Liam come back and play for you on Tuesday. Any news on him? Any news on some of your other injuries? Well, Liam, Liam's come through the game on Tuesday fine, so that's a bonus. Um, so, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's available for tomorrow. Um, Lewis is 50-50. Um, he did a little bit of the, the training yesterday. Uh, hopefully, he won't have a, a reaction to that. We'll know this morning, and if he doesn't have a reaction to that, he'll... He'll join him with the players today and um, he hopefully will be in the squad for tomorrow. Which is a huge plus for you to, to get him back. You know, you're, it is a squad game, but he'd be one of your big performers this season. Yeah, he has. I mean, not only has he sort of brought goals to the team, uh, played well in terms of technically um, and tactically. He's a physical presence in both boxes. Um, you know, obviously, I already mentioned about his goal scoring uh, threat, but you know, defending the box as well and defending crosses and defending set plays is, is a big plus for us. So, uh, keep my fingers crossed, hopefully, will be fine today and uh, he'll be available for tomorrow. Uh, Accrington Stanley, probably for me, one of the, the best managed clubs in the, in the football league, certainly well above where they should be in, in the pecking order, aren't they, in terms of size of club, but they make the most of their geography in terms of recruiting players. Yeah, they do, and um. It surprised me, like, looking at the squad. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous, if I'm being honest, because, you know, you look at the list of the squad and they've got over 30 players in the squad, um, which, you know, I suppose going into a period that we're going to go into December, they look better quick than we do. So, um, listen, John does a fantastic job at Accrington. Um, and, you know, it, it's very similar to, to how I mentioned uh, a few weeks but back, um, I can't remember which club I was talking about, but there's a real uh, togetherness about the club. You can tell it's almost us against the world. Um, and they play without any fear. You know, there's no pressure on them to, to you know, do particularly well in the league or finish in a, a certain position. And I think that just gives them sometimes that little bit of freedom that you need to go and win games. Um, a result aside, it was a dramatic game last time you played them, just before the um, the lockdown at Accrington. I'm sure, as a manager, you wouldn't want a game with perhaps that lack of control that there was that afternoon this Saturday. No, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was crazy, but it was a completely different team. I think, I think this group is completely different to to the one that sort of. Um, Went on the field last time out. Uh, I think the biggest disappointment last time out was, you know, to go ahead. And we went ahead three times in a game and still lost it. So um, that's not a, a sign of a, a group that's got a particularly strong mentality. So, you know, this time around, you know, I'd like to think that if we do go ahead in the game, um, yes, once that can happen and you can lose the game 2-1 or whatever it may be, but not three times, and I'll be a bit disappointed if that ever happens again. And finally for me, start of a really tough week, 1,200 miles, you've talked about that before, a lot of travelling for your players, and a lot being expected of your players in the next week. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult, like, super difficult. You know, I'm looking at the board here as we're speaking, we've barely got a squad fit for tomorrow, in terms of numbers, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fill my bench. Uh, that's how low we are. So to do that, uh, travelling on the back of having limited numbers, and then looking at next month's fixtures, like I've already mentioned, to think, you know, from the Wigan game on the first of December to the whole game is nine games in twenty nine days. So a um, little bit daunting, but at the same time, it's quite exciting as well because there's nothing better than playing games. Sorry, one final question. You um, Obviously, you mentioned you might not be able to fill the bench. It might sound an odd question. There's been a lot of talk about having more subs in the Premier League. If that was available to you, do you think that would help in terms of trying to avoid some of the injuries that, you know, inevitably, because the games you're picking up? Yeah, well, apparently it is available, I think, from tomorrow, uh, from what I'm right. being told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what I'm being told, we can use... We can use five subs from immediate effect. So it's going to be really interesting because, um, 
I'm, I'm looking forward, um, and I'm not saying it's going to be me, but I'm looking forward to, for the first manager to make five subs at half time. I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen. Um, you know, there's going to be a manager out there who's going to be really, really disappointed with his first half performance. Uh, I'm going to, you know, completely change the team at half time. So, um, I mean, what it does, it, it, it's a different dynamic, you know, because there's been many a time. Um, as a manager myself, where maybe a player's not doing particularly well or having a rough time, and you think, well, I don't want to do it, you know, half an hour in, I'll wait till half time, I don't want to kill the player. But I think with five subs, what it does potentially give you that option to, to do it early. Um, I think it de definitely does help the bigger squads, there's no doubt about it, but um, we've got to try and use it now it's in as best as we possibly can.